following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, our, our guest today is going to be Bill Koval of WDK Analytics. He feels pretty strongly that we have made some type of a major top in here. So we'll have Bill on at the half hour. Uh, don't miss Thursday's show, folks, because we're going to have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Cycles. He's been incredibly accurate. And he was also a good friend of uh, Walt Bresser, uh, who passed away uh, last month. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about this DAX. As you can see here, we have some expansion patterns that are up here. Uh, what's interesting is that the ranges, ranges are certainly narrowing. It. They're getting smaller and smaller, pretty much what we're, we're seeing in our markets, which describes a lack of volatility. Whether that will ever rectify itself or not uh, remains to be seen. Well, after I mentioned some of the books that I like yesterday, uh, you know, I guess I didn't do a very good job at it because I did it in a sporadic fashion. So uh, several people have asked me to describe how I learned this stuff. Uh, my first trade was in 1959, a little, stop call, a little stock called Elastic Stop Nut. This is the little plastic things that replace nuts and the nuts and bolts. And uh, it doubled in price. And then uh, from 1960 through 63, I primarily only uh, bought and sold corn. And corn was <laughs> corn was in about a two per two cent trading range uh, over a period of uh, uh, a, a, a two cent range in corn for the week was a lot. So it didn't move very much. You couldn't make very much, but you couldn't lose very much. Uh, but in 1965, when I was in graduate school, I met Dr. Jim Noblet. He was a statistics. Uh, I, I had him for a statistics class. He had other things. He was from Yale, and he was a mathematician, and he related everything in statistics to the stock market uh, for some reason. Uh, he befriended me and uh, you know, took me under his wing, and I would go up to his house and uh, he would show me his charts of Chrysler and Montgomery Ward and uh, wheat and soybeans. And he was very bullish in silver at the time. I've told that silver story. I don't need to go into that. Uh, and I kept doing that for, oh, up until about 1969 uh, or 70. In 1970, I met John Hill at the Cycles Conference, uh, Jim Hurst Cycle Conference called Cyclotech in San Francisco. And uh, John took me under his wing and uh, really started to show me some uh, old books that were really interesting. And I uh, was very much appreciated of him, and I'm still close to he and his family. Uh, he's 92 now and still trading uh, actively every day. And uh, all of his three children are uh, Lundy, uh, John, and Holly. But um, he, he showed some of these old books from George Cole and Schaubacher and uh, Wyckoff and things like that. And I, I sort of understood that. But he also showed me uh, in Gartley's book on page 249 the ABCD pattern known as the Thunderbolt pattern. Well, that, that had come out in 1950 as the Tubb stock market course. And I studied that and I saw the relationships of ABCD. I didn't know diddly squat about the Fibonacci numbers until 1971. And so when I started to put those together, it was a little better. But um, in 1974, um, Charles Lindsay and Larry Williams came out with the Trident Trading Strategy, which was basically page 249 out of Gartley's book. Instead of calling it ABCD, it was P1, P2, P3, P4. And uh, they had a you know system for uh, trading it. And I, I was already trading it. And I lived uh, only about a mile from Charles Lindsay. We lived in Westlake Village. Uh, Larry was still living in Car. Uh, he was, I think he was no. He, Larry was in Montana at that time. And uh, but Charles lived uh, in Westlake Village as I did. He was from SC. He was a mathematician, and uh, our families were were relatively close. And um, 
you know, he he uh, he didn't trade very much. He really researched the markets quite a bit, but didn't uh, didn't trade. That does not a bad thing, by the way. Anyway, that that thing did really well up until about 1976, and then uh, I don't remember exactly what happened, but uh, it sort of went by the wayside. And I I kept studying because during I, I've told this story before, but during 74 I got caught in the you know the market crash of 1974 that took all commodities down along with the stock market. But it was actually the best thing for me because it forced me to really get into the Gartley book and study the patterns. And by then I was starting to look at the Fibonacci ratios that uh, John Hill introduced me to uh, in early 1971. I still have the proportional dividers that he gave me, those little tools that measure you know, 618 and 1.618. And I had the second one for 786 and 1.27. And then I, uh, then when I went to work for Drexel, uh, the first thing I did was, you know, I was able to get a, uh, they took a percentage of what I made and allotted it for education. And uh, I was able to get just about anything that I want. And I was very close to Don Mack at the time, who was running the Investment Center bookstore, I had access to every book and every book that was imaginable that had been that had been written on the financial markets. Don had it. And so I was fortunate enough to get most of my information uh, from that level or from that area. And then I you know, just continued to accumulate it. And then after I wrote a few books, I was asked to review books. And every time a new book came out, I would get it free, you know, from the publisher because I was reviewing the books. And so I just kept building a library that's, oh, I got a lot of books. I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot. But the people I met along the way is uh, – is what the real education was. I was very fortunate to to run. I mean, just flat out lucky, folks. Not just fortunate, just lucky. I I was in the right place at the right time, uh, most of my life. Once in a while, in the wrong place at the wrong time, but most of the time, uh, God's kept me on the right side of the street when traffic's going in the opposite direction. So, I've been pretty lucky with that. But that was basically, you know, uh, it, you know, Gagartley to me is one of the greatest books ever written for technical analysis. I, I don't think you can find much in there that you can't find from other books. Uh, there's other great books. You know, Bryce Gilmore wrote good books on geometry of the markets where, you know, he explains how everything. Uh, no, I don't review books anymore, Marshall. I, I really don't. I, uh, I first of all, I don't have the courage to tell to tell someone that I don't think this book is very good. So it's just easier for me not to uh, not to actually uh, review a book if I if I'm forced to. Now, if it's someone if it's someone that I know, uh, you know, I'll certainly look at the book, and if it's a good review, I'll give it. And once in a while, I you know, I, most of the stuff has got every book's got something good in it, really does. But some books got a lot of stuff. You know, you know, that's basically. In the same thing, you know. Oh, um, someone's asked me questions. Do the Lily people still welcome me? Yes, I still get emails. I still get invited to the uh, funerals and the uh, uh, weddings occasionally, but I still have some friends, and that's been, oh my gosh, that's over uh, 40 years ago. And the reason why is I had some of those people uh, were coattailing me uh, when I was trading beans and silver and some other stuff, and they made a lot of money, and uh, well, a lot of money at the time was five, ten thousand dollars, but now it's a drop in the bucket. But that's uh, that's a little bit. Wow, first break already. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks. Uh, the one question that keeps popping up is, what is the one book that was the most important? Folks, uh, there is, it, it, it's not a book about, uh, uh, it, it's not a book about the market or anything. It, to me, uh, it was the book um, by uh, uh, Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone, Think and Grow Rich, because that really, you know, you have to think in terms of, you know, that you're successful. Uh, I, I, I know the Bible's got all that stuff in it, but, you know, I, I happen to be, uh, you know, from the Bible belt, but uh, being a Catholic, they didn't want us reading the Bible very much. So, but for market stuff, I, I started reading that book back in uh, 1959 when I was a freshman. Uh, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be in Indiana where we had uh, Napoleon Hill would come down and um, and also W. Clement Stone, and they were in Chicago. So whenever we had a chance to go up to Chicago, we could go and listen to those people speak. And Napoleon Hill and Clement Stone were really, uh, really infatuated with the teaching young people, you know, the positive thinking stuff. And uh, it's really, yes, that's the one, W. Clement Stone from Combined Insurance. And anyway, uh, you know, we, we got invited to lunch a couple of times and got to sit down and, and meet with them and everything. And the book really is a great book. You could, it sold hundreds of millions of copies, but that was my start. And I, th I still think it's a good start. Later on, uh, I was to meet Tony Robbins back in 1986 when he was just getting started. And that was, a, that was also a big help because that was neuro-linguistic programming. And I, I believe that's a very positive thing that you can do uh, for trading too. It's all about the mental part, folks. The most important cycle in all the markets for timing uh, is the nine inch cycle, the cycle from ear to ear. If you get that cycle right, the rest of it's real easy. And uh, that's the hardest part to do, but that's what you really that, that's what you really need to do. But you got to get your mind straight 
and uh, then the rest of it, you know, sort of falls into place. The trading is much like any other professional thing, like athletics or, you know, being a doctor or dentist. You have to know the the rules of your business. You have to have the tools of the trade, and you have to be mentally prepared, to, you know, to implement those. And sometimes you are, sometimes you aren't. But uh, that's really how much uh, uh, stuff you know that you have to work from. So, we'll um, <laughs> yeah. Some of these old stories are are quite funny. But anyway, there's a lot of old books that I've used over the years. But uh, you know what I did is I when I wrote uh, my first book, Astro Cycles, uh, that was basically I I didn't even know why I wrote a book. Honest to God. It turned out to be pretty popular, but uh, I, I put the patterns in there that I liked. The Gartley, I didn't have the butterfly till later, but I certainly had the ABCD and some Fibonacci stuff and a few cycles from astrology, uh, and you know it it just evolved. You know, and the reason why I wrote so many books is I don't like watching the monitor. I don't watch the monitor, folks. I mean, I probably watch the monitor less than anybody. I mean, maybe uh, combined an hour a day. And that includes the videos and stuff that I send out. So I, I really don't look at the monitor very much uh, during the day. I do in the evening when I'm doing my uh, work for the next day. But during the day, you know, I don't uh, I don't pay too much attention to it because it'll just confuse you. Uh, the monitor's like a mirror. Uh, it's going to pull out every psychological imperfection that you have. And uh, the reason why is is that the market is you know, your mind is wired to prevent pain. And so if you're, uh, if you're long and the market is going down, that's pain. So you have a tendency to uh, you know, not watch that. But if the market's going up and you're long, you do watch that. So that's where the problem lies is that you're, you're, you're reversing the process. And remember, winners think how much money uh, they can lose because they're worried about the risk that they're taking, whereas uh, losers think how much money they can win. They always have their eye on the prize. And the prize should be protecting your backside, not how much money uh, you're going to make. So uh, watch that very, very closely. Uh, we've had several questions about uh, the soybeans yesterday. Uh, these soybeans are a bit in a range here between, uh, we're looking at July beans or May beans so from 1008 down to about uh, 999. They've been here for well over five or six days. I assume sometime they're going to break out. But whether it'll be in our lifetime or not, I don't know. We're over the equinox, uh, which was yesterday. And, uh, of course, we had that big planning intentions, which is on the 31st. That will definitely uh, cause some rocking and rolling. But uh, those are the main ones that you want to keep an eye on. So we'll watch that. I haven't put the, the uh, chart up for the soybeans yet. If you'll give me one second, I will get it. Oh, I don't think I will. Yes, I will. Just a second. I'd have to get it to... Ah, uh, there we go. I should be all right here. There, we want to get it up here, and we'll be okay. Hold on one second. There we go. We'll put up this uh, bean chart, and uh, we're about 10 cents lower than this chart that was uh, put in on uh, Sunday. Uh, we had a down move yesterday, but we're still in the area. The problem is it hasn't rallied, and if you'll notice that each time we had these down moves in soybeans, and they were perfect. I mean, you know, you look at the time down in all three of those moves, well, the first two, the third one is not given any bounce. That tells me that the bottom is still not in yet. So uh, you know, we're waiting to see some type of a, of a spot where we don't have to uh, risk very much in order to enter the beans. And right now, that spot is just not, uh, has its head rising to the top. I think it's down about another uh, 12 to 15 cents. That's my guess. Down around 980 in July beans is what I'm looking at uh, on a longer term chart. Uh, and, and actually the one to really look at, folks, is in November beans because that's new crop. Uh, that's the one you should be watching. That's the one that has the most bullish pattern of all. Let's put that up and take a look at it. And you'll see here that if we get those, um, well, they're getting down there right now, I guess. Hold on just a minute. We're really close, I suppose. Okay, this is the November tree. If we get below 980, and I believe we're probably uh, not too far away from those lows, so this is going to be a spot where we'll have to take a look at the November beans. But uh, if they do break, they'll just go down to the next support level, and you just wait for the next pattern, and then you'll have a pretty good chance of uh, getting in without risking very much. Now, we had uh, one market that was really uh, going gangbusters uh, yesterday, and it still is. And that is the uh, British pound. We had a really strong move up to the 
uh, 61 percent retracement. We had the 135 pattern. The market immediately broke 100 pips. And then last night, uh, there was some news coming out of the UK, and the market just turned on a dime and went, uh, went up and exceeded that 0.5. So, you know, that, that trade would have entered, you know, we'd have made it either a profit or break even at worst. But what it's done is it has violated that 135 pattern uh, to the downside. So that tells you that the British pound has now started to move to the upside, which we're seeing the same thing in the euro, the pound, uh, the yen. All of these are doing the same type of thing that we talked about when we looked at the U.S. dollar, because the U.S. dollar is the one that's... Uh, you know, running the whole parade. And it's, if you take a look at this, this U.S. dollar looks like it wants to head for lower ground somewhere around the 98 level. That's what it's looking. This would take the euro up into the area of probably 110 to 111. It would still be a bear market, but it's just having a really strong bear market rally. And that's, uh, we have those all the time. So remember, these things never go in one direction with the exception of the stock market. Stay tuned for Bill Koval, WDK Analytics. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Bill Koval of WDK Analytics on the line. Bill, are you there? 
Yeah, sure, I'm Larry. Okay. Um, okay, you're coming in. It sounds like you're in a submarine, but that's okay. Hopefully, you'll have enough oxygen. Uh, anyway, I've got your first chart put up of the S&P 500 cash. You want to tell the folks uh, what you're looking at here? Yeah, Larry, this is uh, just, you know, the current prices on a, on a monthly basis. Uh, you know, we talked about discussing the long-term um, you know, top in the market, and um, this is showing that, you know, it's not – it's not, it's not quite there yet in terms of being able to uh, call it. What we need to happen is um, on a, on a long-term, you know, monthly uh, basis perhaps, if not longer, is we need to um, uh, have the, uh, the price bars break uh, the long-term trend line. And if you'll go to the next slide, you can kind of see that in action. Okay, hold on. We'll put this up here so that the folks can take a look at it and uh, we'll just get it moved. There you go. It broke it once. It looks like it broke it twice here uh, over the past uh, uh, seven years, but uh, each time it was a uh, move up. Correct? It, it, it was a it, it was a penetration, uh, but um, arguably in both cases, uh, uh, you know, it may or may not have closed below that line. So. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, by crafting subtle rules like that, you can, you know, hope to try to stay in uh, on those things. Now, the, the chart on the left um, is a kind of a dramatic comparison between uh, the price and the, uh, you know, one of the internal measures, which is the number of stocks above the 200-day moving average. Uh, the fact is that um, the S&P index is up 300% from that low in 2009, uh, whereas the uh, stocks above the 200-day uh, uh, is up, uh, uh, you know, barely, well, um, and that's, I want to say it's, it's uh, up about 50%. Uh, it's probably up almost 10 times, really. But um, uh, compared to the actual price now versus the top is down about 45% from the highs, whereas um, the S&P has maintained that 300% uh, you know, gain. So uh, a lot of divergence there. The next slide, which is number two, um, Hold on, I'll put it up is, here for us. Sure. There we go. Go right ahead. Yeah, you, you remember maybe a week or more ago, I, I talked to you or sent you an email about, um, you know, some indexes I was comparing, and, and I'm always doing research on this thing or that, and um, some time ago I had um, I discovered that uh, – yeah, the Russell 2K tends to lead, if you will, in quotes, um, the other indexes, both on the bottom and the top. And um, here we're showing uh, on the top pane the S&P 500, and we're comparing um, both the um, R2K, you know, Russell 2000, with um, the NASDAQ 100 as well as the OEX index. Uh, the middle one has all three of them in there, and even even though um, the Russell and the NASDAQ 100 uh, sometimes really outperform um, the S&P here um, in the last, um, I think this is probably about uh, going on six months ago, it's, it's actually down compared to price. And when you strip out the NQ, that is the bottom third of that pane, um, the comparison e is even worse. So um, the balance of what I've got to show you is uh, some, some typical internals variance, negative variance, negative divergence from the S&P. But um, uh, these, these two bottom panes are a little bit more credible in, in the sense that um, you know, they're actual comparable indexes, and they're showing that the momentum for those indexes is declining in the face of the uh, higher S&P. Mm -hmm. Well, they've certainly moved the S&P and the Dow, uh, and also the New York Stock Exchange Index has done very well these last uh, this past month. You know, after the Trump speech, everything has gone, uh, you know, pretty much uh, ballistic. But it, are you seeing any one particular thing that uh, is? Uh, 
making you wonder about a top here in the market, or is it just a combination of several things that you're looking at? combination of things. I mean, literally, I, I, I tried to pick the most um, trenchant, um, you know, indicators and, and charts that I had. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is that um, relative to, you know, the long-term basis, uh, um, you know, particularly monthly, and, and um, you can see divergent that, I, well, let me finish that phrase, that you really can't, there's not enough um, substance there to, to really say that the top is in. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of things say it's, you know, overbought and could be here, but um, we can't actually confirm that yet. It won't know until the top, until we know it's a top. That's about pretty much the right way to look at it, I guess. Uh, now, yeah. now, do you, do you uh, want to go to the next one? Uh, that's yeah, the one about no, the volume. Is, that's the one that I really have an interest in. Is the one on the volume that you've uh, you've talked about. Just let me get this up here so that we can uh, put it into the room correctly. There you go. Uh, we're going to be talking about volume now. Yeah, I, I like this one as well because it's a raw number. I mean, there's no you know mumbo jumbo with it. Um, it's just uh, you know the Nasdaq, the pure Nasdaq volume. So. Um, and you can see that that tapped um, here about uh, four months ago or so. Let's see, 80 even. These are trading days, but not not calendar days. So um, uh, that that's pretty dramatic. I mean, you know, typically uh, uh, Nasdaq has oftentimes outperformed the S and P for periods of time, and uh, it's it's a very broad index. And if its volume is is waning, why? Uh, it, it's a little bit concerning. Oh, it certainly is. That's for sure, because volume is the the steam in the engine, from what I've always heard. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. whether that's true or not, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, we've got only about a minute here uh, before we go to the break. So, you want to tell the folks uh, how they can reach you and get a sample of your letter? Yeah, sure. Um, just to, you know, on each slide, there's the the web address, a so URL, wdkanalytics.com. There's a, a an email button on there where they can enter their email address <coughs> and uh, sign up for a free subscription. Okay, that sounds that sounds pretty good. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to come to a little break here, and then when we come back. I'd like to chat with you a little bit more about the uh, last charts that you have here, and uh, we'll we'll move on to to that level. And uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, uh, did you uh, did you ever meet uh, Walt Bressert, the cycle guy from, uh, you know, back in the 80s? I don't know if you were uh, doing cycle work back in then, but he passed away in February. And I'm, uh, you know, letting people know that because uh, he was pretty much in obscurity these last 10 years because he was suffering from Alzheimer's. And we'll take a little break here. 877-927-6648. If you're looking to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market-safe core commodity CD from EverBank. This five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities, gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi-annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percent yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. We broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're on with Bill Koval of WDK Analytics. Bill, I've got your chart five up on the volume. You want to describe to us what you're watching here? Um, yeah, Larry, um, this chart number five um, is, is very similar to four. And as a matter of fact, uh, during the break, I've been, I looked at um, all of them in, in uh, total. And they're, you know, they're literally uh, showing the same pattern that that uh, raw NASDAQ volume is. Um, you know, dramatic uh, rise off the, you know, the lows around election time, and then a, you know, steady deterioration. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, let me sum up by saying one thing. I mean, you know, a lot of uh, analysts, uh, you know, are showing similar things, um, and the truth is that I, I think what's distorting this market is, um, you know, if you pay any attention to the uh, advisor space. Um, the uh, passive investing has has, has kind of grown in um, in uh, predominance lately, and in my opinion, uh, you know everybody's piling into the um, you know the S and P even more than they ever did, and um, you know it just keeps levitating it. And you know if if we knew when they would stop doing that, we might be able to call the top. So. Aha! Uh -huh. This is a good thing to know. <laughs> well, when the top comes, I think we'll know it because there'll be some type of a uh, a big shakeout, then a rally back, and then you know something like that. But uh, it certainly has had a lot of strength. That's for uh, for sure. Bill, the quest question one of our listeners is asking is: Is there any particular uh, indi index or indices, uh, uh, any type of an indicator that you look at during the day? that gives you a indication whether it's going to be a up day or a down day? Oh, boy. Um, well, you know, I've got what I think is the most sophisticated uh, futures trading setup I've ever seen. And there, there, are, there are just a whole host of things there. Um, yeah, I, I knew when we talked the other day or when I emailed you that the market was coming down uh, for a retrace just because of the combined um, weight of what, what these indicators were saying. Um, you caught me at a kind of a loss for words there in terms of, uh, you know, picking one of them. Um, I mean, I, I compare it, uh, you know, the S&P to a number of other indicators. Um, I... Um, I, I, I look for the S&P to lead. I'm not trying to um, deep dive against, uh, you know, the NASDAQ or OEX or something and look for variances there because, yeah. you know, the S&P is where it's at. So sure. um, I, I think in addition to some, you know, combining some um, 
uh, some indicators on charts, I you know I pay attention to the um, you know the the uh, real time internals such as uh, tick and. Um, you know, the advanced decline index, et cetera. Um, you know, we always think that the, the, the futures leads all the time, but sometimes you can get a lot of hints from looking at the cash, how it's comparing to the, um, to the futures. And, and I don't well, mean it was necessarily. Just, <laughs> it, was sort of an unfair, it was sort of an unfair question because I couldn't answer it uh, either because there's, there's just so many things that you have to take in consideration when you're, watching these things to say whether it's going to be an up day or down day because even though the day starts out really strong you know after the first hour or so it could change you never know so okay let's take a look at this last chart that you have here uh it's the one that is related to the tail risk hedging i think this is a real interesting one because i've never seen anything like this before you want to explain to us uh, what this is yeah, that's actually a, a Bloomberg chart that I, I ran into online, and um, it, it's showing SKU, um, which is the, um, the, the CBOE metric uh, which compares uh, out of the money um, options. They're looking out about three months and trying to compare what's what's going on with the put call ratios uh, uh, with the um, three months out compared to the current. Um, I, I use that you know every day in, in various metrics that I have, and um, but I combine it with um, VIX and um, uh, and the VVIX, and you know I, it, it's what I see in, in my numbers uh, that the, the, the skew has blown out quite a bit. Um, this typical interpretation is, and it's sh shown in the text there that um, within. Um, you know, a few weeks or a month or two following a blowout like that, that, you know, the, um, the S&P index is, is going to decline. So it, it shows, it, it specifically says the VIX surges 65%. Well, that's going to take a big dent out of uh, price if, if that repeats itself again. The problem is it could be coming from a VIX of eight, so 65% is not going to take it very far. <laughs> there's, there's hardly anybody that is... Uh, you know, making any money in the VIX uh, lately because, you know, it's just been straight down, which is uh, unusual, but it does change at that particular time. Uh, what uh, Do you use Bloomberg as part of your uh, uh, data coming in? Is that what you use for a uh, data source? No, I do not. I, I use, um, um, oh, I think I use a rhythmic platform on, on top of which, um, you know, my, all my charts and indicators and things are uh, done in uh, with Sierra chart um, and you know I, I developed some new indicators in Sierra chart which I haven't really publicized much but it's that uh, what I call my famous volume line which is really incredible in terms of um, uh, interpolating where you know where the marks going on, on most any time frame and as a matter of fact uh, I, you know I'm glad that question comes up because if I had to narrow down one thing that gives me a real solid insight, it's it's that volume indicator. It's, it's uh, just amazing. And, you know, I, I see it every every issue in my uh, newsletter. So, you know, folks can be more familiar with it. But um, eventually I'm, I'm going to uh, start selling it. It's probably within the next, uh, I don't know, three months, something like that maybe. So um, they might want to stay tuned to that. But um, volume is a, is a kind of a hidden thing, like, you know, as you observed with uh, the NASDAQ raw volume there, it's extremely important, and uh, Wall Street doesn't use it. I mean, you know, some great chartists on the street, but, you know, they're operating with uh, one hand be tied behind their back because they don't use volume. Okay, I understand that. Uh, by the way, if uh, you do uh, have more information on your volume indicator that you're going to come out with it, you know, please let me know. And, uh, you know, we'll let the folks here, uh, you know, take a look at it just to see how it works for a while. Because, you know, if it starts to work, that's the time-tested rule that you have a pretty good chance of, uh, you know, getting a few customers. Now, uh, we're coming up to the break now. I want to thank you for joining us this week. And uh, we'll have you on maybe uh, in another month or so. How's that? Sounds good, Larry. Uh, it's just my pleasure.
Okay, and we've got all your contact information listed, so I think we're set to go. And uh, this was Bill Koval of WDK Analytics today, folks. And we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be right back uh, after this message. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we want to take a, a little uh, conversation here about the gold. Uh, we just hit the 61% retracement of the whole move from um, 12 uh, 65 down to 1194. That number comes in here at uh, 1238. So pay particular attention to that because uh, that should be some very strong resistance in gold at the 1238 level. If it does not act as resistance, then the only other thing you're looking at is the 786, which is up another $10. And if we get it above 1248, folks, uh, as uh, Steve Rhodes mentioned uh, yesterday, and also, uh, John Logan, uh, this has got a chance to really have some legs 
you know, to move uh, a great deal higher. So watch this level of 1238 uh, in the uh, gold very closely. Now, I don't buy a breakout like this, folks. I found that it's cheaper for me to just write my checks to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange as opposed to buying a you know big breakout like that. You can do it, but you've got to determine where your stop is going to be. And on a move a market that's moving a lot like this one is moving, I think the minimum risk you would use would be uh, you know five dollars uh, an ounce. So I wouldn't stop buy it until it got to 1240. Make sure it clears 1238 with ease. And then if you wanted to put a $5 stop in at 1235, you could certainly uh, certainly do that. Technically, that wouldn't be a bad idea because that's that old high that we made just a few days ago. Then we backed off $10, of course, to 1226. And so that would be some place to put it if you if you want to jump on a horse that's uh, you know heading towards the uh, the final finish line. But I don't do that very often. But if I were to do it, that's how I would do it. But I frankly will not be doing that. I will be waiting uh, to see how it handles the 61% retracement. We've been actually been up now for uh, five days in a row with no correction. And that itself gives me a little bit of trepidation here. But uh, this 1238 would certainly be an interesting spot here. Uh, we're at 1238.40 right now, so it'll be within a couple of dollars of this. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade.